and I realized that I'm between you and lunch, so I have to make this interesting and fast. Um, and it's wonderful to be here in the birthplace of Sea Grant and to come all the way from the Gulf Coast and share some best practices that we're doing. So I'm going to share with you um, a Gulf Coast-wide effort we have called the Clean and Resilient Marina Program. And just right off the bat, I have to give credit where credit is due. I was not involved in helping build this program. This was a Gulf Coast-wide effort involving state agencies, mostly our uh, agencies that are associated with the Coastal Zone Management Program, as well as um, sea grant programs from the Gulf Coast. Um, and just to start, here is a, a smattering of pictures of why we needed resilience and marinas um, in the Gulf Coast area. In 2005, we had Katrina and Rita. 2008, Gustav and Ike. 2012, Hurricane Isaac. Um, and so our boats have experienced a lot of damage. And we have, you know, just in Louisiana, we have 4,000 federally permitted commercial fishing vessels. We have about 13,000 state permitted fishing vessels and then hundreds of thousands of recreational boaters. So it's a huge issue for us um, and that's why we needed resilience in <coughs> marinas. And so just to give you a little bit of background about how this started, the Gulf of Mexico Alliance, as I mentioned, is a statewide, I mean Gulf Coast wide partnership with all five Gulf Coast states. Um, and they uh, every couple of years come up with this governor's action plan. And for 2009 to 2014, one of the goals in this action plan was to promote and expand resilient and environmentally responsible operations, and best management practices at marinas as a way of standardizing these practices across the Gulf Coast. So um, the Coastal Community Resilience Pit team or priority issue team for the Gulf of Mexico Alliance said, okay, we're going to take this on. Um, and of course, this effort is building on previous projects. From the 90s, we've had the Clean Marina program, which is focused on environmental best practices, um, oil spill prevention, pollution control, waste management control at marinas. Um, but as you can see from those pictures earlier, the Clean Marina program itself did not really um, raise awareness or provide information related to resilience. So in addition to the uh, each Gulf Coast state clean marina program, we also had an effort a couple of years ago to develop a coastal resilience index. And the focus of this index or checklist, um, it was really targeted towards local governments to be able to sit down and answer a variety of questions based on different storm scenarios to assess their ability to return to an acceptable level of functioning after a disaster. And so between the Clean Marina Program and the Resilient Index, Community Resilience Index, the GOMA, Gulf of Mexico Alliance, Clean and Resilient Marina Task Force decided to combine these two and all with the effort of achieving some goals of mitigation at marinas. And so the overall goals of the Clean and Resilient Marina Program are to protect human life and safety, reduce exposure of structures on water and land to hurricane or storm surge related damage, reduce exposure of boats to damage, minimize damage to property that can't be relocated, and to resume business operations as quickly as possible. And so the Clean and Resilient Marina Task Force surveyed a variety of marina professionals from across the Gulf Coast uh, to, in order to select the topics that they were going to focus on in the Resilient Marina checklist. And so a variety of resources were produced and developed from this effort. Um, we have a checklist, which I'll talk a little bit more. And if you come to my round table at lunch, I have a copy of the checklist. Um, as well as, you know, we call, there are a lot of resources that were developed from this effort. We have this at a glance, which just provides some quick background information in addition to the checklist. Then there's a little bit longer document that provides summary information on why things are important to include in your marina planning such as marina siting and design for those that are actually 
can afford to do retrofits or um, for those who are constructing the marinas. Um, there's a whole section of emergency preparedness, evacuation procedures, stormwater management, a little bit on um, climate adaptation and sea level rise, and then information on outreach and education to voters. And so we have this, um, in addition to, the, this is called volume one, which describes why all of these factors are important. And then volume two, which I couldn't bring with me because it's this big, um, <laughs> includes a sampling of resilient practices or hurricane preparedness plans that several marinas around the Gulf Coast already have. So it provides a way for other marinas to say, well, this marina in Florida has a really well-developed hurricane emergency plan. I can adapt it to my situation. And so just an example um, from the checklist uh, related to marina design and maintenance. Um, as I mentioned, this builds into our already established clean marina program. So the way we included resilience into the checklist was to ask a series of questions that are really kind of yes or no questions or more qualitative questions um, to, to raise awareness. Uh, so for example, when it comes to marina siting or where waterside facilities are going to be or landside facilities, um, some of the questions raise awareness to marina owners, have you considered tidal and storm surge in your marina designs? Um, do you have a boat launch that can accommodate a mass number of vessels trying to be pulled out of the water when there's a hurricane forecast? Um, are your docks hurricane resistant? Um, are your buildings on site wind resistant? And so the, the questions, uh, instead of, the, the questions on the checklist don't, uh, they don't target compliance with strict engineering or design standards. They're definitely more qualitative questions to raise awareness of why, why resilience is important, as well as what the different categories are that marina owners can work in to improve their resilience. And so the process for becoming a certified, clean, and resilient marina, it's completely voluntary. So the marina will contact the state agency in Louisiana. It's the Department of Natural Resources and Louisiana Sea Grant who go out and certify a marina. The marina owner will um, do a self-assessment with the checklist, and they sign a pledge to say, I will be clean and resilient. And then we go to the marina, and we go through the checklist with them, and if they um, marked yes on a certain percentage of questions, then we say, you are a clean and resilient marina, and we give them some uh, outreach materials they can pass out to their voters, they get a giant flag that they can hang up in their facility, we put them on a website, so we're really creating awareness. Um, and just as a, as a note of to how new this program is, the materials were officially rolled out in March of 2013, so since that time, uh, the certification for clean and resilient marinas has, has been slow. Um, in Florida, the first clean and resilient marina was dedicated in September of this year. So you know, while we have hundreds of clean marinas across the Gulf Coast, the clean and resilient program is just coming online. One of the other resources that was developed was a policy guide um, to provide some model legislation for how local communities can address some of these issues um, related to marina siting, but as well as just general land use planning um, for hurricanes and floods. Um, and I just wanted to quickly mention that the Clean and Resilient Marina Checklist is one example of how we are engaging um, private industry or the business community in the Gulf Coast. We're also working on resilience indices or checklists for ports and harbors, uh, for tourism businesses, uh, like coastal tourism, um, as well as commercial fisheries. So there's a lot of this uh, awareness happening on the Gulf Coast. And I just to wrap up, you know, in Louisiana we have 18 clean marinas. And for 2015, we're hoping to get a couple to step up and take the pledge to be clean and resilient. So.